Hi guys, welcome back to another art lesson with the Bakersfield Museum of Art. My name is Curtis, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about different techniques you can use with chalk and pastels. Now before we begin with our project, I want to talk to you about an artist named Marion Osborne Cunningham, who is an avid pastel user and very gifted in it. Marion Osborne Cunningham was born in South Bend, Indiana on May 29, 1908. The Osborne family moved west shortly after Marion was born and settled in Bakersfield, California. From Bakersfield High School, she attended Santa Barbara Junior College, followed by art studies at Stanford University, Art Students League in New York City, and the California School of Fine Arts. Cunningham lived and worked in San Francisco during her adult life. Becoming well known as a pastel artist in the early 1930s, she soon branched out to other art forms such as serigraph and painting. She would be heavily influenced by her surroundings in San Francisco, as well as her travels to South America. Marion Osborne Cunningham died unexpectedly of a brain tumor while in New York City on March 25, 1948. In honor of her, her parents would establish the Cunningham Memorial Art Gallery in 1956. This would later become the Bakersfield Museum of Art, which we know and love today. For today's project, I will be recreating this piece entitled Coit Tower by Marion Osborne Cunningham, part of the BMOA Permanent Collection. For today's project, you will need assorted soft pastels, chalk, paper, and a pencil. To begin this project, I've opted to trace a large rectangle within my paper so that at the end of the project I can make a frame for it. Uh, you don't have to do this. Um, if you want to use the entire paper, you're more than welcome to. I've gone ahead and placed uh, an image of the original uh, piece that we're, that we're copying, essentially, in the upper right-hand corner, just as reference to you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and start off by doing a, a light green sky, but I'm also going to be blending in some darker greens with a pastel. Uh, the base of the sky is going to be done with chalk, and then the blending is going to be done by lightly scraping across the darker green and blending it in with my finger. Now as you're doing this, you're going to notice some key differences between chalk and pastels. Uh, working with chalk, the chalk is a, a lot more dense, it's a, a lot, little bit more um, hard than the soft pastels. And the soft pastels are, are quite the opposite. They go onto the paper very easily and uh, makes them very good for blending in with the, uh, the chalk base. While I'm using similar colors to the original piece, I'm not using uh, exactly the same colors that are featured in uh, Coit Tower. And uh, my piece is gonna end up a little bit more light and that's okay with me. And you should feel free to sub out colors as you see fit as well. While recreating this piece, I've chosen to uh, create individual shapes. Um, this is one method to do this. Another method would be to use a grid, as we've seen in a previous video. But really, how you choose to do it is your own. While looking at uh, the piece by Cunningham, uh, Coit's Tower, I, I really get a sense of a, of a cold, windy day at the, near the sea. Um, but I also kind of get a sense of loneliness um, in this particular piece. It makes me wonder what was going on in her life while she was creating this piece. Now as you continue to color, um, if you are unhappy with any of your colors or, or shapes, uh, feel free to take more chalk and more pastels and uh, change them, um, blend more colors in, uh, change the shapes with adding more layers. Uh, pastel and chalk are things that uh, work very well with uh, layering themselves. And now that I have my roads and uh, cliffside uh, colored in, I'm going to go ahead and start on the actual tower itself. I'm going to be using a dark green pastel which I'm going to go ahead and blend in. But then, of course, I'm going to be adding more colors on top of that to uh, create uh, more uh, uh, shading to the tower, as well as giving it a sense of depth. 
I've done this by adding yellow uh, chalk on top of the green pastel and blending that in, but then by also adding a little bit of uh, black on the other side and blending that in to give it um, kind of a gradation in color. And I'll go in and add in some darker lines up here to create my clouds. I'm going to be using uh, blending uh, to create those kind of wispy clouds as well. And I'm going to go ahead and add some white chalk on top of my darker clouds to lighten them up a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and add in some blue. And um, there's supposed to be actually a little kind of a lagoon down here on this right side of the cliff. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, pastel to cover up that black that I put down there, just using more of that layering technique. As I'm nearing the end of my reproduction, I'm going to go ahead and do some more of the little detail work I may have left out when I was doing my, my larger scale coloring. It's that little detail work that can really help to define different shapes and different areas in your work. For the last step in my project, I'm going to go ahead and add that framing I was talking about at the beginning of the video. I'm just going to take some purple pastel and put a nice little layer of that overwards, over the work. And then I'm going to take a slightly damp cloth and I'm going to go ahead and blend that into the paper. Uh, using a damp cloth on pastels can give you some different effects, almost like a, a watercolor or, or a paint-like effect on the, on the pastel. And then to finish it up, I'm going to take some white chalk and do some little serifs and designs over the frame area and make it look like a, like a proper frame. And here we have a comparison of the two pieces, mine on the left and the original on the right. And while they are very different, they do share similarities, and it was a lot of fun to create. So what do you think? I certainly hope you enjoyed today's art lesson as much as I enjoyed teaching it. Please join us again next time for another art lesson with the Bakersfield Museum of Art, and have a great day.